What purpose does the gentlewoman from New Mexico seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 2930 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 2930, a bill to enhance protections of Native American tangible cultural heritage and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from New Mexico, Ms. Leje Fernandez, and the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Westerman, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from New Mexico. Thank you, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. Madam Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. H.R. 2930, the Safeguard Tribal Objects of Patrimony Act of 2021, or STOP Act, will increase the penalties for trafficking tribal cultural patrimony and will explicitly, explicitly prohibit the export of such objects. The STOP Act will establish federal frameworks to assist in the repatriation of stolen tribal objects between federal agencies and tribal governments. Due to colonization, it's no secret that the exploitation of Native American cultural items like human remains, sacred objects, and other tools have been looted and stole, sold to collectors around the world. In the 1970s, the Pueblo of Acoma in New Mexico had their sacred Acoma shield stolen during a robbery on tribal lands. Imagine the tribe's surprise when their sacred Acoma shield was scheduled for sale to the highest bidder at the Eve Auction House in Paris, France. Thanks to an outpouring of support and diplomatic pleas against the auction house, the sale was stopped. But incidents like these will continue to occur without a codified method to hold traffickers of cultural patrimony accountable. While the Acoma Shield is one example where the sale did not go through, there are countless and numerous other undiscovered and unreported cases where tribal cultural artifacts and items are sold or auctioned in pure disrespect for their proper ownership and place of reverence. Cultural items belonging to Native Americans and Native Hawaiians should no longer be considered relics of the past and available to sale to the highest bidder. It's time for our country to celebrate the cultural items and protect them from exploitation. The STOP Act will direct the Department of the Interior to convene an interagency working group, refer individuals and organizations to Indian tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations to facilitate the voluntary return of human remains and cultural items, and convene a Native American working group with representatives from Indian tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations to provide advice on issues concerning the return of an illegal trade in human remains and cultural items. The United States is a signatory to an international treaty that entrusts the federal government with supporting the repatriation of other countries' tribal objects. So we do it for other countries, but we don't do it for our own. Our Native tribes and Native Hawaiians do not have the same statutory mechanism to prevent cultural sacred items in the United States from going overseas to other countries. The STOP Act requires the Department of the Interior and the Department of State to each designate a liaison to facilitate and hold trainings and workshops on the voluntary return of human remains and cultural items. The bill reflects significant compromises and adjustments to accommodate concerns of antiquity dealers and has gone through 20 amendments. I was pleased to see these efforts recognized with passage in committee by unanimous consent. This version reflects negotiations with tribal leaders, federal agency experts, and the Authentic Tribal Art Dealers Association. As many know, New Mexico holds the largest Indian art market where artists sell their beautiful creations. The Southwest Indian Arts, Swaya, has declared their support for the STOP Act. So passage of the STOP Act will allow the United States to strengthen its ability to prohibit the exportation of Native American and Native Hawaiian cultural items. Let's not forget that Native American and Native Hawaiian history is our country's history. 
The protection of these cultural items must be a priority for our country because once they are stolen and taken out of our country, they become lost to those who revere them. I urge the swift adoption of H.R. 2930, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, Congress has long recognized the importance of Native American tribal cultural items and their historical, traditional, and cultural importance to Native American tribes. Approximately 137 million Native American artifacts, works of arts, and specimens are in the Smithsonian's collections, according to the Government Accountability Office. Both the Archaeological Resources Protection Act and the Native American Grave Protection and Repatriation Act provide a legal framework for the repatriation of human remains and cultural items to Indian tribes. While these two statutes have greatly reduced the sale of certain cultural items within the United States, many items have appeared in European auctions where they have little legal protection from being sold. In recent years, Paris auction houses facilitated the sale of Hopi, Navajo, and Acoma tribal mask and ceremonial items. The U.S. government attempted to intervene by, to prevent the sales, but the French government and the auction houses maintained that they were legal. In response to this problem, former Congressman Steve Pierce introduced a concurrent resolution in March of 2016 condemning these sales and requesting that the U.S. Comptroller General conduct a report on the issue. The Safeguard Tribal Objects of Patrimony Act, or the STOP Act, would expand legal protections to Native American tribal artifacts and sacred objects by increasing criminal penalties for repeat traffickers of Native American human remains or cultural items <coughs> and banning the export of illegally obtained items. The Department of the Interior would be required to form an interagency working group to facilitate repatriation of items and protect items currently in an Indian tribe's possession. To incentivize repatriation, the bill would allow com immunity from prosecution if an individual voluntarily surrenders to the appropriate tribe the Native American cultural objects in, her, in his or her possession within two years of enactment. I want to thank the sponsor of the legislation for working with stakeholders impacted by this bill, including the Acoma, Pueblo, and Antique Tribal Art Dealers Association, the Department of the Interior, the Department of Justice, and others. It is important that we protect cultural items and historic significance to our Indian tribes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from New Mexico is recognized. Madam Speaker, I too wish to thank the really incredible support and uh, working relationship that we have developed with the ranking member and uh, other members of the committee. Uh, this is a bipartisan bill, uh, and it has taken some work to get it where it is today, but I think that we are all supportive of it. The really wonderful thing is that when I am home um, in New Mexico, I am asked about this bill repeatedly because they, the nations want to see their works uh, protected. These are cultural items that belong with those who know how to revere them, who know how to protect them, who know how to care for them. And it is something that you will hear tribes across this country, not, in, not only in New Mexico, ask Congress to take action on this. And I'm very pleased that we are taking action today on the STOP Act. Uh, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Arkansas is recognized. Madam Speaker, I'm prepared to close. I encourage adoption of this, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Arkansas yields back. The gentlewoman from New Mexico is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I have no further requests for time, and uh, uh, my colleague has already indicated he uh, no longer has any speakers on his side either. Correct. <laughs> So I yield back. Uh, I would, uh, ma Madam Speaker, uh, I urge my colleagues to support the legislation. Um, I also want to point out that, uh, and I see that in the chamber, we have uh, the Representative Young, who is a co-sponsor. I also like to thank Representative Cole and Radragon for joining uh, in this bill. So it does have bipartisan support. Um, I urge my colleagues to support the legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. 
The gentlewoman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 2930 as amended? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider. The gentleman from Arizona. I seek the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Pursuant to Section 3S of House Resolution 8, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings are postponed.